Okay, so we're moving right along here. We did uh, take a look at the picture, uh, the finished painting uh, of some beautiful daisies and purple flowers and red flowers and a nice vase. So this is a more, you know, real fun, simple painting to do. Um, uh, it's uh, something where, you know, you can, you can maybe grab some uh, photographs or pictures, watercolor paintings. You know, you can kind of mix and match with flowers. It's really fun. Uh, I like to just take maybe different pictures, uh, photographs, um, different resources and kind of mix them together to get like a nice composition of flowers or set up flowers too as well. Sometimes I'll buy fresh flowers uh, or sometimes we'll, um, you know, uh, I have some uh, plastic flowers that I bought from uh, different um, big box stores that have the uh, silk and plastic flowers. So sometimes I'll use those for like a guide to paint, but I'd rather work from fresh flowers. They seem to look, you know, they're much more beautiful, obviously, the, the real, uh, you know, natural uh, fresh cut flowers. But sometimes I'll have uh, just, you know, some silk ones at the house uh, I keep around and I'll sometimes just practice with uh, and put those in a vase and paint from those too. But this this uh, particular um, exer uh, exercise or our small composition we're going to do, I'm just basically putting a couple different um, ideas uh, from some pictures and, and some watercolor paintings together. So, but again, you're going to be working, of course, from the, the uh, painting we just uh, showed in the beginning here, which is the finished painting. And we're just kind of working, uh, we're reverse engineering that painting right now as we go forward. So we'll just kind of, um, we'll get started and we're going to, And then uh, we're going to do some And what's fun about flowers, um, we can uh, We can paint some flowers uh, exact and more precise, and then other flowers we can actually just uh, so we don't always have to paint everything exact. Some will do more precise. Uh, some will do. So I'm trying to again follow what I see. And I'm just going to keep uh, moving, moving along here. I, got, I have some smaller flowers here, some yellow buttercup type flowers. And there's daisies here. And then we have a few really uh, beautiful, colorful uh, wildflowers, some red wildflowers. And you can put a small R if you, you know, if you want to, um, It'll be okay because we're going to be working from a from the finished painting, so it's a little bit easier. But uh, and then we'll have some purplish uh, flowers here. So the purple flowers I'm going to paint. Um, I'll leave those uh, kind of loose and we'll, we'll splash for those and, and kind of just make them more um, carefree looking and we're not going to get too detailed with those. Um, and I'll just make some marks on the paper <clears throat> just to remember that I'm going to put those small flower shapes within those.
Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Now, um, when we start painting this, you'll see that um, we're going to develop a lot of the uh, flower shapes by negative shape painting, which is painting around the flowers to make them appear. So we're going to leave the um, white of the paper where our white daisies are, and then we'll put in the uh, yellow buttercups here and there and the purple lilac um, uh, flowers with paint. So we'll just uh, we'll have fun. There's some red, uh, beautiful red flowers too as well, so we're going to put those in a, a number of areas too. So we're going to have a nice, good-looking mixture of colors with our um, flowers here. So we'll make sure and you don't have, like let's not the thing is let's not sweat the details when you do when we do our pencil drawing um, we're not going to sweat all the details and worry about oh where, do I remember where the red flowers are or the yellow buttercup flowers or the white daisies or the li the purple lilac uh, flowers we're not going to worry so much about that we did draw them in here and we we draw we drew them pretty you know accurately you know from what we're looking at but it can sometimes get a little bit like overwhelming to start to think once we're done with our pencil drawing and then we're going to start going in and paint, we're going to get a little bit like panicky, like, oh, am I going to remember where all these different colors are going to go with the different flowers? But as long as you have your reference painting, you'll have my reference painting that we had in the beginning. So you can, you'll have that to use. And if you're doing something on your own too, as well, um, you just, um, Keep referring back to your subject matter, whether it's your vase of flowers that you set up for like a still life, or you're working from a photograph, or you know, or uh, working from a painting, another painting from another watercolor artist, in a book, and so on. Um, that's all. Just remembering to always reference back to your your source material that you're using, and you'll you'll be fine. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to use my reference material I'm using, and then um, we'll continue on. So this is. Uh, uh, the pencil drawing and then now we'll continue on and we'll, we'll start doing the painting. We'll take a quick break and then we'll come right back. Okay, we just had our break uh, after our pencil drawing. Now we're going to get back in and we're going to do some painting. So I have, basically I'm going to use two brushes. I'll use the uh, Charles Reed um, Escada uh, Sable Round Brush. And I'll use my Alvaro Castaneda needlepoint brush too as well for some of the fine details. So with these two brushes, I really, this painting should be fine. Uh, this is a number eight needlepoint and this is a uh, number, uh, I think this is a six. Oh, it's a number eight. So they're both number eight. So a number eight round and a number eight needlepoint brush. So these two brushes will, um, that's all we're going to need for this painting, I think. Should be fine. And then we'll start... Um, with some greens, so we'll just mix up some greens here. Um, sap green, olive green. Um, we'll put in a little French ultramarine blue and uh, burnt sienna to make a little bit of a dark up here, just if we want to get some darker tonal values with our greens, we can kind of go into that and uh, some burnt umber even too as well and I think that's good we can put in some purple too we'll make some purple over here and some cerulean blue and purple which is um, Windsor & Newton uh, ultramarine violet my favorite purple as far as commercially available paint um, and that should be good so we put that little bit of uh, burnt sienna and burnt umber to sort of just have a little bit of a toning down of the green a little bit and a little bit of a darkening with the French ultramarine blue as well. And that will look pretty good. Let's, uh, we'll get started with our paints and we're gonna, we'll just start um, carefully uh, placing our dark greens into the um, center mass of the flowers key here is um, what I feel would be is not making large spots of color but sort of painting around the petals of the white daisies here so I'm carefully painting painting 
around, so we're negative shape painting around the daisies, the petals of the daisies. And I'm carefully just going and just looking at the carefully at the pencil drawing and now I want to do a little bit of a change so maybe I'll go with some sap green over here I mean uh, olive green a little bit lighter maybe a touch of cadmium lemon yellow just for some a little bit of a change in the tonal value and And I'm working around the center of the mass of flowers. And then I'll just maybe loosen up a little bit and do a couple splashes. That just helps me to kind of free up a little bit and not get so worried about every exact detail. And we'll go in with some more that lemony yellow. We're having fun here. That's the main thing. Have fun when we paint. We're not going to sweat every detail. And then you can kind of see we're already getting a nice feel of the the bouquet of flowers and wildflowers inside this vase. Maybe a little bit of that blue and purple, cerulean blue and purple, to get some. And I'll just do some, kind of flick the color outwards a little bit. And then some green. So that's basically just uh, wet and wet. Put some wet wash down, let it set for a couple of seconds or two, and then we go in with another different color and just tap it in there a little bit here and there, and it kind of diffuses nicely. And then we're going to go in with some of our purple for our lilac, lilac color, and we're going to do that. A couple splashes with that to get our details. And once we do that, we can let that set there for a few. A couple more splashes with the green. And then I'll start working again around the uh, petals of the uh, daisies over here. And we have some really nice uh, Kind of an alizarin crimson and a cadmium red mixture, maybe with a little bit of burnt umber for a change in uh, um, tonal value in that red. And that's going to be there. We'll have a red there. So we'll have a couple beautiful red wildflowers here and a couple over here. So I'll start putting those in. And then I'll maybe change up and just go with straight cadmium red for a few. That always uh, looks good too. Kind of doing a couple maybe darker in tonal value with maybe the the mixture that we did and then maybe just straight um, cadmium red for a few. Like that. Okay, so we have some really beautiful colors working here and um, let's get some more greens, sap green. And French ultramarine blue. And I'll just get a couple feelings of stems. And we'll also work with our uh, needlepoint brush in just a few. Leave some white paper within the flower arrangement. That looks good. And uh, we're going to continue around our petals here. We're going to start to take some cadmium orange, cadmium, ye cadmium yellow. And we'll put some of that cadmium yellow into the centers of our 
petals. Okay. And you can see that as we paint around those petals, it really starts to really look good and I'll use a little bit of that um, cerulean blue and purple for some shadowing. So we'll we'll have some light coming from the right side to the left. So we'll darken it up over here, and then we'll just slowly add some water to this edge and just kind of soften it. Maybe a little bit of raw sienna. Warm up that wash a little. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now what I'm going to do is um, take another break. We've been working, you know, 10, 15 minutes now. Good time to take a break while we're working. Um, come back and look at it. It's also nice to let all this dry now because then when we go in and do continual washes and small um, bits of our um, negative shape painting within this bouquet, we're getting there. But if we do some more painting here, it's better if it's a little drier. So if we let it dry a little while and then come back, we're going to do uh, a lot better with doing the subsequent washes in here and, and continue on painting here. And we'll also paint around some of these flower shapes. But we're in good, we're in good uh, shape here. And... Um, We'll continue working. So let's take a quick break and then we'll come back. We'll start to finish up the flower uh, arrangement area and we'll do some work on the table and the background a little bit and then we should be done. So it's a really nice quick painting to do. Fun, lots of colors, um, beautiful bouquet of flowers always looks great and uh, for painting and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get right back just after a few minutes of taking a break. All right, so we took a, a, a little break, and now we're going to come back and start working again. I just uh, took maybe a five or ten minute break, and um, that's enough that we uh, let some of the paint just set up a little bit and uh, dry just a touch, a little more. And uh, we'll go in, we'll start doing uh, a little more of the uh, purple lilacs here. So let's use our purple splash. We'll get some splashing. And uh, if we do that, that looks good. A little splashing, a little dabbing. And over here. All right. Look, that looks good. And I'm going to... I'll use the um, needlepoint brush now. We'll, we'll mix up a little more green. 
straight green right out of the uh, palette here, straight paint. There's a little tiny bit of water on it from rinsing off the brush, but other than that, it's pretty, pretty much straight paint. Maybe a little bit of the lighter green, so we use some cadmium lemon yellow with some of this mixed in it just to and I think that's gonna give a little more of that brighter feel there's some And so I'll continue with that cadmium lemon yellow. And then some darker green here so we can go a little bit. And I'm painting around some of these petals. So some of the flowers we really describe and we do our negative shape painting around most of the flower. And then some of these other flowers here, these daisies, we let them sort of disappear into the outer border of the bouquet so that they kind of have that lost and found look, which looks really good. Um, so I guess what we're trying to av avoid is um, taking every flower and painting around every flower, negative shape painting around every flower, we're trying to sort of, some flowers we detail quite a bit, and then others we just let them go and let them sort of, you know, vibrate and, you know, uh, disappear into the um, white of the paper around the edges here and around the bouquet areas. So we're not trying to... Um, if we leave a little bit of mystery to the flowers, we're in pretty good shape. And I think we're, we've, we've pretty much, I think we can do a little more over this daisy here up here. We can do a little more there. And then we just follow the shape of the flower. So I'll just take my brush, do a couple practice spin, you know, uh, moves, and then So I'm just looking at my pencil uh, drawing and kind of following over the top with my brush stroke, with my, with my brush. And, and I'll get a little more of a mix here with some burnt umber. And I'll And I just do a few of the stems and things around the outer portion of the painting. It kind of looks good to do a few straight and then a few kind of, you know, curvy with the um, stems and uh, forms of the uh, flower bouquet. That looks pretty good. So we get the feel of just a lot of, you know, beautiful wildflowers in here and daisies and it has a nice look to it. It's kind of very fun and free looking. And then we'll work on uh, back with our uh, round brush will we'll do some shadowing so I use some purple and some uh, and some blue purple blue some uh, raw, raw umber for our shadow 
in which shadows the flowers above Try to blend that in a little bit. And then maybe we'll do a little blue over here for the background. Now what I try to do here is blue and green. And I, I'm negative shape painting the table. So I'm doing the background, which then it describes the, the tabletop here. So I'll mix in some red kind of just I'm using the same colors that I used in the bouquet for the um, behind the table and I just mix in some colors a little splashing and this is more just having fun we're having fun we're watercolor artists it's a fun medium so um, try to Use the repeating colors that we had, purple, cerulean blue, raw umber, and then we can go right into the vase area. And then I dry off my brush a little bit and then just kind of lightly dab and kind of swirl a little bit just to Create that background color that'll really make the table become you know full of light and it just looks great. Maybe a little more blue over here. I dab around, have fun. A little bit of splashing, maybe a little bit of uh, orange, that warm orange color. But I do that carefully in just a couple dabs here and there. I don't want to keep painting and painting over everything and like um, it looks good just kind of dabbed on a little bit and scrubbed a little bit, not too much. Uh, overworking I think and that looks pretty good so I think we're really we have a good uh, I will do a little more green over here so I'm pretending that there's some shadows over here on this side of the painting from the flowers. And this side's a little lighter, so the right side's a little lighter. And this side over, the left side over here is a little darker. Just added a little more blue there for the shadowing. Cobalt and French ultramarine. And then just a, ever so slightly a little bit of the um, shadowing underneath that um, vase where it tapers up toward the uh, top of the vase so that that really that sometimes can like look good too and I think that's looks good I think we're we're pretty much completed all right so that's we could do a little more um, I think I see maybe over here This uh, center of the vase looks 
where I did this here. Let me go with some blue, French ultramarine blue, sap green, burnt umber. And I think I'm just going to do a couple more. In the center here, I thought there might be a little more. And I, I think I might do some... I might take a little white, titanium white. Although I think the best thing is let's let this dry. We'll just do one more break for like 10 minutes. And then I'm just going to take some titanium white with a little bit of um, yellow ochre in it. And I'm just going to tap in a couple uh, splashes of titanium white on this area here, this green area. That green area looks a little bit like it could use a little sprucing up. We might even, maybe we'll put some more flowers in this area. So I think we'll do that. We'll add some more color over here on this center section. So another thing with watercolor is you can always take a break, walk away, come back 15 minutes later, and then reassess what's happening on your painting. And then you say, oh, you know what? This area up here looks a little bit, you know, boring or there's nothing there. It kind of didn't come out the way I wanted it. I want more color there. And that's what we'll do. We'll just add in a couple more um, colorful flowers up here and we'll splash in a little bit of this white to make it look like some uh, interesting uh, maybe some baby's breath or something you know and it'll look great okay so we'll come right back in about 10 minutes we'll let this dry and then we'll uh, get started again okay so now we're going to finish up um, this painting it's a lot of fun to uh, do the last uh, little bit of um, work to, to a painting it's always a uh, a feeling like of relaxing and just enjoying those last few um, touches of a color and and paint and and just uh, you know kind of assessing everything and it, so this is um, uh, the fun part and uh, I think we're going to do that little bit of um, splashing with our titanium white over here and uh, a couple little dabs of color too maybe we'll do the titanium white first. So I'll take my titanium white, I'll take a little bit of a yellow ochre and just mix it into the top of the paint like that. And then if I have to add just a touch of water to the brush just to get it to splash. And not quite enough, a little more. It's a careful process of getting just the right amount of water onto the brush. There we go. So we'll do those splashes. And we can we can do them on other portions of the painting. Again, a little bit of more I put a little more water on my brush. This brush is, um, I'm always careful not to put too much water. There we go. So it's just that little right spot. You always want to find that perfect, you know, bit of water and paint mixture. Not too much water. Just enough. There we go. Okay, so that's good. And a couple more spots here and there. Okay, so we have that. And then we can do, um, you know, maybe a couple, uh, we'll use some cadmium yellow. Just a couple dabs of color is going to look just perfect. Here and there, like that. Um, already it's looking really much more uh, lively and, and interesting. And then some red, so we cadmium red, a little bit of alizarin crimson, and we'll put another a couple of wildflowers there, one small one. So I always do like um, try to keep things uh, non-symmetrical, so a large flower then a smaller flower there, maybe another like that, and a little bit wider at the top, like that. And I think that looks good. I, I'm 
going to tend to say that's a, a, enough to have a little bit of color in there. Like we said, it was a little bland, not looking so great. We added some yellow, some red, looks good. Um, we don't want to keep working on it too much. We want to try to, and we can always come back 15 or 20 minutes later, take another break and look and say, okay, I might do like one or two more little flowers in there, but we don't want to keep going on and on. That's the thing. I think it's good to kind of um, stop uh, our stop uh, our painting a little bit short of feeling like we need to do more. And that's that's kind of usually the perfect spot. Like I feel like I want to add some more flowers in here, but I, I hold back and say, let me just stop a little bit short of adding a little more to it because I think that might look a little better. If I stop at that point and don't add any more, that tends to be the right spot to let the painting just, uh, you know, be as it is and it doesn't get overworked. So it stays fresh looking and not too um, busy and complicated. And this is a very complicated flower arrangement too. A lot of interesting things going on in there. So I think it's just right. And we'll take the uh, tape off here. And again, I always mention, if you haven't subscribed, you know, please con you know consider subscribing. We do paintings uh, every week. And we do flower paintings, landscapes, seascapes, um, still life paintings, figure paintings. So we kind of do everything and we just kind of mix it up here on my channel, Chris Petrie. Um, and I also have another channel, Watercolor in Five. That's also a channel I sometimes do some like uh, interesting things on palettes and paints, what I use for paper, you know, palettes, brushes, all that kind of thing. So that's an interesting uh, channel too that I have on YouTube. But uh, this channel here is always the same. We do one painting every week. Sometimes we'll do maybe two in a week, but that's usually rare. Um, I usually do a painting every weekend and we get together. And if you subscribe, you'll uh, be alerted when we have a new um, painting coming out on the weekends. And if you hit the notification bell, you'll definitely get the message. It'll send a, a message to your, to your electronic device. Uh, letting you know we're just made a new paint a new painting a new uh, video and uh, we're gonna just uh, zoom in a little bit on this I'll just move this over a touch here and okay so that's the finished painting. I'm um, glad you stopped by to paint with us, and uh, we'll, we'll have fun. We'll come back next week. We'll do another painting. We'll have a great time. Um, everyone, uh, be well, and uh, happy painting. We'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye. Okay, welcome. This is Chris Petrie. Thanks for coming by. I'm glad you're here, and we're going to paint together. We're going to have a fun time painting this uh, uh, bouquet of flowers, uh, some wild flowers, daisies, um, some uh, uh, lilac uh, flowers. We have some uh, nice, beautiful greens. Um, some buttercups. We have uh, some interesting uh, subject matter here. Flowers are always beautiful to paint. I know many of you really enjoy the flower um, uh, videos that we do here, so I'm really excited that uh, you're coming by and we're uh, going to uh, work on this. So this is just the finished painting. If you want to um, pause and uh, work from this video, the beginning of this video, that's fine. Uh, you could take a picture, screen capture, however you want to do it, but this is really the best way um, to, do, to work along with uh, my videos is to work from this finished painting, and uh, that's why I'm putting them now, the finished paintings in the beginning of the videos. You'll have so much more fun, and it'll be easier to um, paint if you have this uh, reference uh, painting to paint from. So you would uh, draw from this. You can also uh, stop the video on the end of the sketching uh, portion of this video and use that as your uh, guide to do your pencil drawing, your contour drawing, and then you can again come back and stop your video on this painting, finish painting, and then work from this to do your painting portion. So that usually works out pretty good. You have your pencil drawing and your uh, finished painting, both you can work from, and uh, that's the best route to go. Um, I personally would probably watch the video full through one time and then come back and then stop it on the section where there's the pencil drawing and work from that. And then once um, you're finished with the pencil drawing using my pencil drawing um, as a guide, then you, you can come back and either use the painting at the end of the video or this painting here now, which is the finished painting too as well, uh, in the beginning of the video to um, work from. As far as your uh, paints, you'll 
be able to see the paint colors a lot better. So you'll kind of be able to um, uh, know what uh, colors I'm using by just looking at the finished painting. All right, so we're going to get into the video now. And uh, thanks again for coming by, and we'll, we'll get started. <laughs> 